see the nightmare of schizophrenia is not knowing what's true. A beautiful mind succumbs to a debilitating brain disease. You're sick, John. Here is someone who had been for decades lost, forgotten, who not only recovered, but won world acclaim. And recovers thanks to a beautiful heart. Now, an Oscar-nominated film offers a glimpse of what it's like to live with mental illness. Schizophrenia can happen to anybody. It's an equal opportunity disease. It is possible to triumph over this illness. But what if you're not a Nobel Prize winner? It's a dual stigma, you know, because we're all already stigmatized. Tonight, a troubled mind understanding mental illness. Like most Hollywood movies based on true stories, A Beautiful Mind takes some artistic liberties with the facts. The film, up for eight Oscars on Sunday, tells the story of John Nash. He won a Nobel Prize in mathematics, yet he struggles with paranoid schizophrenia. Some scenes from the movie are stitched from whole cloth, and the film has been criticized for certain sins of omission. But by all accounts, the movie does a pretty fair job of depicting an often misunderstood mental illness. Like the film Rain Man about autism, a beautiful mind may dispel some myths about paranoid schizophrenia. It is not a split personality. It is a brain disease. The most prominent symptom is an inability to distinguish between delusion and reality. It afflicts nearly three million Americans and perhaps a third of the nation's homeless. There is no cure, but good treatment can make a huge difference for those lucky enough to get it. So can the support of family and friends, and for those reasons alone, the story of John Nash is instructive, even seen through the glossy lens of a Hollywood movie. John Nash has been described as, quote, the most remarkable mathematician of the second half century. He not only wrote a PhD thesis that eventually won him a Nobel Prize, but he solved several century-old problems in pure mathematics. John? Turn it off. Turn off the light. Why would you do that? John Nash uh, was at the height of his career, mathematical celebrity, when he got ill. Singularities in space time, then. <clears throat> when he was uh, 30 years old, he suddenly began to believe that he was the emperor of Antarctica, the prince of peace. Somebody, help me! John, open the door. Talk to me. Tell me what happened. We wanted to get people happen. to feel that, to not see it, not but to present a three-dimensional reality for the viewer so that they're feeling it on their highest level. And that, to us, would create the highest level of compassion towards John Nash. Ever just know something, Dr. Nash? Constantly. The movie depicts Nash's delusion, such as breaking cycles. Soviet codes during the Cold War, like one of several examples in the data. film that is based on fact. One day he walked into the math common room and pointed to the New York Times and said, this story has encrypted messages from aliens from outer space. You had to create a style in which you could be introduced into an alternate reality that would at the same time be entertaining and palpable. You see, the nightmare of schizophrenia is not knowing what's true. What followed was uh, years in which he was unable to work. He abandoned mathematics. For 30 years, um, John Nash 
lived with you know, this terrible illness, which transformed him. He lived in dire poverty and increasing isolation. You are not real. You are not real. You're still talking to me, soldier. He fell really far. He fell about as far as, as you can fall. Maybe I have to think about going back into the hospital again. Maybe try again tomorrow. The film takes dramatic license with the marriage of John and Alicia Nash. In fact, they divorced in 1963. But the movie is true to Alicia's undying devotion. The scenes in the movie, in that little house, were incredibly sad. I didn't mean to hurt you. Of course, the reality, which um, persisted for day in and day out um, for 25 years was even sadder, which makes, to me, John Nash's triumph and, and Alicia's loyalty, in a way, even more romantic and awe-inspiring. It's about capturing the heartbeat or essentially the spirit of the person's life. I ask, what truly is logic? Who decides reason? I would use the no Nobel Prize speech as an example of metaphor and invention that nonetheless captured something that was very real. I'm only here tonight because of you. You are the reason I am. <sighs> you are all my reasons. Nash never made that speech. Um, in fact, he wasn't allowed to give the customary Nobel lecture because of his history. So he didn't say those wonderful words um, to Alicia. But in fact, he did something that was even more extraordinary. He has spent years uh, helping her care for their son who's ill. And after all these years of living together, really most of their lives, and being so indebted to Alicia, he uh, remarried her. And his actions, if, if they are not loving and romantic, I don't know what is.